Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. Um, I've been a little bit busy to film stuff this week. This is actually the first time I've picked the camera up and it's already dark outside on a Friday. It's been one of them weeks. Um, this week's episode is going to be a water heater swap that I did a couple of weeks ago and a boiler fault I went to, which kind of tripped me up a little bit. And we also go back to the shop refurb just to get a few bits finished off there. I've just been a bit rushed off my feet. I think most plumbers are busy at the minute, but yeah. This week's been mental. Um, mind you, it's better to be busy than uh, quiet. But yeah, well, um, get straight on with the video. As always, thank you for watching, and um, we'll catch you in there. I'm going to change that vessel because it's full. Um, it's only a two litre one to carry them, and I'll change that PRV as well while I'm changing the heater. So they very rarely get topped up, at least it's vertical. So you've got cold coming in through the pressure reduction valve, normal turn valve, stop the hot water going back into the main, into the vessel to take the expansion as the heat water, uh, as the heat warms up. PRV, that's your cold, and then there's one off the unit for the temperature pressure relief, and that just goes into a waterless trap. Uh, and yeah, that should be fine. Ideally, we'd have a twin dish on there, but you should be able to see if that's running. And that's just stopped the smells coming back. Well, let's let the cold in. Open the hot tap. That won't actually drain the unit, but we can lift it off well anyway. These ones have got a blender inside. We need to disconnect the electrics. Um, and then just lift the unit off. Let that breathe in the hot. Come on, that lift off. Oh, it's just two screws. It should just lift straight off. the element is nearly completely rotted out on that one so i just got asked to replace it so that's exactly what i'm doing I'll pre wide it up because it's going to be easier. So, hoping that will just lift on. Should get back, you can shorten that down a touch, cold or pipe back in, discharge our sort of out. That's easy. Just pop a little bend on for my cold. I'll do that one. The old Hillmore still coming in clutch.
as you can see that's completely full so I'll whip that female line off there and I've got a just a new two litre one He's been dripping probably because the expansion vessel's knackered, so I changed that as well. That's the one we want six bar for a six bar. Just need a couple of male irons, uh, they're due to female and a socket on there. So I see what I've got, get that back in there, and then we'll just connect that one back up at the top. That doesn't seem to want to go on there, so I'm just going to cut the olive off <laughs> using the monument. They're brilliant, by the way. I've had them since I was an apprentice, and we we'll change that nut. It's a bit better. I don't know whether that nut had been crossed or whatever, but that'd be fine. Well, we'll get this water back on. Okay, switch fill up, and then we can turn the power on. So in a second, this will start coughing. Obviously, when the leak's full. There we go. We're safe to flip the power on and we'll check the temperatures. So the red LED goes on there. There is a cover that goes on there, obviously. Uh, these blenders should be preset. We need it about between around 40 degrees will be fine. So we'll store it at 60, deliver it at 40. Make sure we've got no leaks. I know I've used compression, but compression's better on the outlet anyway. Because if you ever want to disconnect the heater, you can do. That should be fine. Obviously, that's your... Uh, temperature pressure relief that goes inside the unit so that'll discharge blender cold in hot out simple as that on it obviously the element don't put my fingers on that it's live so this cover should just snap on that's it the temperature's too hot so for some reason the thing was stuck on max and I couldn't adjust it so I've had to take the top off, free it off and then I've had to turn it manually but it'll be okay once I've got the temperature set it'll be fine so we'll just turn it we'll turn it down a little bit and we'll recheck it right, I've been called to this job uh, they've had a water meter fitted customer states no hot water have to meter fitted what I'm going to do, the hot water seems okay, the flow out the taps, I've just ran it, um, but they said it came out really brown, so I'm thinking I'm going to whip that flow turbine out and have a look if it's full of crap. It's obviously not sensing sensing flow, not firing the boiler. Um, I'll isolate it and we'll have a look, see what we find. It's a Worcester high flow, you don't come across too many of these, obviously. Isolate the cold, we just open the hot tap to get rid of the pressure and we'll have a look what's going on. We can probably do a little bit out of that. Just open that into the tray, drain that down.
future song here, this is the bit where I made a slight mistake. Um, what you should have been out here is a blow down that flow turbine, it should be whistling. Um, obviously this one was broken, I didn't realise until I got it all put back together and that's why the boiler wouldn't fire. It would fire in to heat the slave tank but then the boiler wouldn't fire when you open the hot tap. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't know what had broke it because in a second you'll see I've took the filter out and it's completely clear. So whether a bit of grit had got past that filter and broken the, broken the turbine off it, I'm not sure. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, as I say, slight, slight inexperience there. Uh, as you blow down that, in theory if I turn the power back on, the boiler should have fired in, but I didn't check that. When you're under pressure and the phone's ringing and everything like that, sometimes you miss the basic. I was on the right track, but then I didn't go that one extra step. Um, so yeah, that's the mistake I made. Uh, but I do figure it out in a second and the penny does drop. Um, so yeah, I'll crack straight back on with the video. Disconnect this off the boiler. Filter is completely clear. Right, we're getting hot water through there now. You can see it's steaming. I just make sure the boiler's on. Right, it went to 53, which tells me it was nice and stable. The plate's not blocked. Uh, we'll just try that again. Right, that flow turbine's bust. I should have blown down it, but the impeller's gone, so it must have hit a bit of grit. That's why the boiler won't firing in. Anyway, I've changed it now. Put a new one on. And we're happy days. Everything, I knew something wasn't quite right. It worked when you overrid it, put it on service, it heated the tank, but then it won't fire back in. So, yeah. Sorted anyway. That's not a fault code, by the way. That's just condensed fill. Um, there is a way you can turn them off, but I can never remember. You can go into the set to turn that down. Uh, but you're supposed to turn it back on because it is a safety feature. It's basically filling the condensed trap. Um, but yeah, should be all right. These Worcester high flows will give you good, good water as well. I've only just cracked that tap on it because it's steaming up. I know I ain't got my thermometer in, but we're getting like 20 litres a minute. It's red hot. So I think we're good. Christmas just opened hot tap upstairs the boiler fired back in they've just shut it again now actually but as soon as you open the tap it fires in so happy days right at least i got that one sorted that was a little bit of inexperience there uh, probably should have blown down that uh, flow turbine because obviously that's what fires the boiler in it will always heat the slave tank first but the boiler wasn't kicking back in i think what had happened a bit of grit osmosis had got in and obviously broken it um, when i blew down the new one i didn't film it but it was you could actually hear it like whistling if that makes sense um what you didn't see in that video is that's why i stopped filming because i had to drive two uh, an hour there to get the part and an hour back so now it is 12 o'clock um but nothing else you could do when you've got like a not irate but an annoyed customer because obviously they put a stop tap in outside on a water meter and then obviously a load of crap go in the water main and then the boiler would break you, you can understand why they're a little bit annoyed so I, it's not like i could wait to get the part until monday or tuesday or whatever you know um so yeah at least i got that one sorted for um um as i say i'll know for next time just to blow down that and make sure it is but it's not something i've seen before and you only learn from your mistakes and you need to learn by doing the job um but yeah at least it's sorted we'll get straight on to the next i'm actually back on the shop refurb um absolutely no parking today i don't know what is going on on the high street there's all police down there uh, so i've had to i'm gonna have to carry all my crap down there now um so yeah i'll try and get some shots if not you know i'm just too busy but yeah well uh one job at a time Right, back on this one. I've just got to plumb this sink in with a blender. I got it all in last time, all the kitchen sink uh, fixed in. And then I've got all the grab rails to do. The problem is, I've only got an hour and a half. Um, and my van's on the roof and it takes like 15 minutes to go up and down. Because <laughs> I'm just out of time today already. Because I've got other jobs to get to. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we get on. Um, and we'll crack straight on with it. That's all plumbed in. We'll give that a go. Thank you. 
good to me, it's all the way still. I've had to use compression because there's no soldering or hot works in here. Um, but yeah, other than that, should be fine. I save valves onto the blender, hot out, cold in, just running that around. This was the Dock M pack. Um, as you say, I had a bit of a nightmare when I fit this, if you remember that video, because the pipes were coming out. But literally, you can't see anything now. Right, I haven't got time to do the grab rails today. I'll maybe get one of the lads to do it. But basically, there's Dock M uh, regulations to show you where your rails go. One either side of the basin. Uh, you've got one on the back of the door, although that door shouldn't really be blue because it should be a contrasting colour. So I might have to get a white rail for that anyway. Um, you've got a drop, a drop down rail. Obviously, you need to get really good fixings on that. It's all been plied out anyway, it goes there. And then there's one more somewhere, but I can't remember where that goes. Um, but yeah, there's as much as I can do off. Made sure that the pan's got two fixings in now either side because I only had one set of sinks, stainless screws. Um, but at least all the all the basins and everything are all plumbed in, all the kitchen's done. So this this little job's all done, thankfully. I've just got to be somewhere else this afternoon. Um, and next week I'm doing, I've got a gas pipe to run. The builders have run dug the trench now I'm gonna I'm gonna fusion weld it underneath back up to the meter just take 28 up to the meter and up to the boiler uh, I don't know if we'll be able to film on that job but I like I prefer to fusion weld it. it's a little bit complicated but I don't even think you can use the mechanical joints under the ground now I think you used to be able to but I think fusion welds a better job anyway um, so I've got that to do next week I think that'll be two days on that because um, there's quite a bit to do I'll show you if we're anywhere if I can film it um, what I've got breakdown this afternoon See, it's just busy all the time, it's just constant, non-stop. But at least this job's been pushed along a bit and I hopefully won't be chased as much as it was.